Good afternoon everyone. Um, a nice chap contacted me called Robin who said he's got an issue with his uh, Ditton 33s. Um, distortion in the base driver, very recessed mid-range, um, wasn't too sure about the HF I don't think. Um, and at some point in their life, fairly recently I think, they've been subject to the amplifier being wound right up I think by uh, by little fingers we've all had that before and um, it's done a bit of damage um, these live in a bookcase where you can't really see the cabinets too much just the covers um, so I'm not going to cosmetically tidy these up they are in pretty poor condition really um, the speaker cloth is torn and threaded looks like a cat's been at them possibly uh, lots of staining on it but the important thing is to get them sounding right but, um, apparently they've been to a hi-fi dealer who charged the uh, charge Robin I think he said 80 quid or something like that um, when he took them there because of this sound issue and uh, they charged him 80 quid and said yeah everything's fine which it really isn't. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think what I'll do, I'll, I've measured these. I'll put the measurements up first, and you can browse through those, and then we'll have a have a chat. Right, so I'm calling this speaker A and this one speaker B. Um, speaker A is probably in better cosmetic condition than speaker B, but speaker A is the one with all the problems. So as you probably saw in, in the measurements for both, the mid-range isn't playing. Um, that mid-range, either the driver's dead or there's a crossover, crossover issue. But you can see where the woof is rolling off and where the tweeter's coming in and this big gap in the middle, there's nothing there. So, two things. Um, we could have a capacitor failure in the crossover that's um, broken the circuit. There's also a resistor on the crossover, which I think from memory they're only five, maybe seven watts so uh, rated, so they could easily burn out. Uh, or worst case, we've got two dead mid-range drivers. They have spares, so that's not the end of the world. Um, HF seems to be outputting properly but there's so much distortion I've shown the distortion figures in my measurements um, and on speaker A we've got quite a lot of distortion in the HF but also the uh, bass as well the woofer on this is making quite a crackly scratchy sound between 40 and 80 Hertz and that was the main complaint, uh, complaint with this speaker it sounds like voice coil rub, um, so I may have to take that apart. It may be the case that the voice coil has got hot, the lacquer on the windings has melted and created some rough edges that are catching. might just be cone sag, I don't know. Um, I did go through various test tones and I thought they cleaned up a bit. Um, there might just be some muck in there, I don't know. Woofer on speaker B seems to be nice and clean. Uh, we do have distortion um, in the upper mid-range, so uh, I don't think the mid-ranges are outputting at all, or if they are, maybe that's where the distortion's coming from. Um, so yeah, it's a case of getting them working properly. 
I don't think Robin's really worried about how they look. Um, it'd be nice to recloth them because that's the front you see. If they're in a bookcase and you don't see the top, bottom and the sides, um, I don't know, I'll suggest it, but uh, I think we're going to be in this for crossover rebuild. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether we're going to rewire them um, and we need to sort this mid-range out. So I think what we'll do, I'll bring you in closer so you can have a look at the cabinets and then we'll dig into this speaker which has got the woofer problem um, and see what we find. Okay. Right, so let's let's have a look at this one first. I need to check the glue in on these because some of that sounds a bit hollow. Um, so this one isn't cosmetically too bad. We've got corners that are quite sharp. And the veneer is okay. Edges are pretty good. Um, so the veneer is trying to come away a little bit, but that's not the end of the world. And the back is okay. Now, this speaker has been apart before because that binding post is loose and is not standard. That's what we had in these. So, someone's been in here already. Um, so, yeah. This cloth is all, all ripped up, so we'll take another look at we'll take a look at the other one. So this is a speaker I'm calling speaker B because they don't have serial numbers on. Actually, they do. But anyway, so we've got a knock in the corner. Again, the veneer is okay. We've got chips and knocks here. Um, the top is very marked um, not too bad at the front a bit of the corner out there and a chunk out the bottom there um, but I think there's enough here to sand these back and get them looking pretty good I can wood fill this you'd know it was there but um, I think we would get this pretty good um, recloth them as well but uh, yeah, that's the cosmetic condition of them. So we'll take a look inside speaker A and see what we find. Okay, right. So as you can see there on the speaker cloth, she pretty shredded. I think uh, a cougar's been on, on that. <laughs> right, so the front panel is, is pretty nice. Obviously it's being protected by the covers. Um, the HF1000 tweeter, both of these seem working. Um, I don't think the distortion's coming from these, I don't know yet. Um, these are incredibly fragile. These lead wires, um, it's not uncommon to find them snapped. Uh, so, yeah, but this is looking pretty good. Mid range, I don't know, it's nice and free. And the woofer. There is a bit, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, it doesn't feel too bad. And you can see these clamps here are the sort of thing you'd find the HF2000 tweeters clamped down with um, and used on quite a few Celestian speakers and you can see marks here and here, so this woof has been out before. <laughs> right, so here's our woofer. Not looking too bad. Push fit connections. I don't know, they just. I don't like them. No, I don't know, that's. That's not catching. I think what I'll do, I'll um, test this in free air 
and um, exercise it for a while um, because yeah unless the voice coil is breaking down we'll um, DC resistance test it shortly right, let's take our mid out as well that was easy to take out normally the uh, gasket material really sticks these in Feels good. Hmm. Okay, so push fit again. We'll test these. Right. Take the foam out. There's our crossover. Ah, right, straight away, super loose positive terminal. And that's the one that's been replaced. Hmm. I wonder if that's got anything to do with our woofer and distortion issue. Otherwise, Everything isn't looking too bad. Right, I'll take the crossover out and we'll have a look at that. Right, let's have a look at some of these bits and pieces. Let's DC resistance test our woofer first. <coughs> 4.3 ohms, yeah, that's what I'd expect to see. Yep, okay. I'm not so sure that this is at fault. Sounds like it is from what I was hearing earlier, but I don't know. Let's see, right, mid range. Is it the mid range or is it the crossover? Four point two. Right, problems in the crossover. That's really good. That's really good news. And I hope, I suspect, it's this resistor. So these are two point two ohms. And if it's not that resistor, it might be the first capacitor we have in uh, in series or in circuit. Sorry, which I think is a thirty. Yeah. Right. Let's check our resistor see if we got anything across that hmm our resistor is okay right I think we'll get the soldering iron lift up some of these see what we got um, when I took this crossover out the nuts were really loose so I don't know if someone's been in here before Right. Let's have a look. <clears throat> right, so this cap should be thirty microfarad. Thirty six point two, okay. Interesting. Let's lift a leg up on both these inductors. Right, so let's test this inductor. This, um, we carry on from this capacitor through this, and then we are grounding this capacitor with this inductor, grounding this inductor with the this capacitor. So this cap's limiting how low the mid plays, this inductor is limiting how high it plays. Second order arrangement on both. Right. Yeah, that's okay as well. Let's 
Press this inductor here. Two point two milli Henry. Just check this cap once more. Thirty six point five. Okay, so ten percent would be three. So we're quite a bit out. Let's take this cap out. So this is a 16 microfarad. Seventeen point nine two. Hmm. Very strange. So our mid circuit, whilst we've got caps out of tolerance, our resistor is conducting. It's not broken, which is what I suspected. Our mid is okay. None of the circuit tracks look bad. Right. Weird. Right, so I've hooked this mid-range up to my signal generator. And... All is good. Interesting. Right, so I can't directly find anything wrong with that mid-range circuit at the moment, <clears throat> and our mid-range is outputting. Um, so I need to check the wiring, make sure that's continuous, um, and then we'll check all the other components on here as well. Right, let's check these other caps and see what's going on. So here we have a 12. Thirteen, basically, and here we have a seven. So these two here are on the tweeter circuit with that inductor in the middle down to ground, third order. Nine, yeah. So some of these are quite far out. Seventy-two. Seventy-seven. I think these two make a ninety from memory. So we've got a thirty and a sixty. Yeah. Sixty-six point six. Thirty-seven. So they are. They're they're pretty far out, really. Right. This inductor. <clears throat> two point two milli Henry. That's fine. All right. Check this. So we've got a fourth order arrangement on the woofer. 4.51. One. 1 1.3 ohms. And then our little inductor here on the tweeter circuit.
point one three zero point one three millihenry one ohm right very weird <clears throat> so in terms of the mid driver it's working in terms of the crossover whilst we have caps way out of tolerance it doesn't make sense that the mid isn't working Oh, hang on a minute. Ah, right. <clears throat> that might be the reason. Hmm. I have to hold that on there, I think. That we have a really dry solder joint. Right, if I push on that, if I test on the leg there. God, right, okay. So on this speaker, you probably can't see that, but that solder joint there is completely dry. Just hasn't taken on the, um, the leg of the resistor at all. Right, okay. Well, now we know why that one isn't working. Let's have a look at the other one. Right, so I've taken the other speaker apart. So here is our woofer. Really dusty, but nice and free, in fact. Yeah, they feel the same. Might be lucky with that woofer. And here is our mid-range, so let's just quickly... DC test these. I've got a lot of leads here. Come on, tidy up, Matt. Right, let's just quickly test this woofer. Yep, 4.5. Okay, good, good. And our mid-range, like the other, feels fine, looks fine, dusty dirty, but beyond that, give that a blast, yeah, that's okay, right, okay, really can't have the same problem, so I'm going to Let's just check across this resistor first. Surely we can't have the same problem. Right, I'll lift up all the legs and we'll do the same again. Right, might have already found the problem with this one. So we come in through this resistor, through this cap, which looks incredibly puffed up and a bit heat damaged <clears throat> but the leg of this inductor here so we come through this cap ground out with this inductor carry on to this inductor was hardly in there um, and the solder had become quite a blob so i don't know if that had got a hot um right <clears throat> let's test this capacitor because this looks really bad to me That's taken an A. Ooh, 41. The ESR, we're in the killer, uh, killer ohms. So we've got nothing passing through there. Wow. Okay. So on this one, 
the reason we're not working is because of this 30 microfarad cap. Come on. Yeah, blimey. <clears throat> okay, and you can physically see on that how puffed up that is. Big lump in the middle. Okay, the resistor on this one is okay. I suspect with the other one it had gotten really hot and probably just parted the solder around the um, around the lead wire, around the leg. Whereas this one, it's, it's the cap that's bought it. Okay, let's have a look at this inductor. Should be 2.2, <clears throat> yep. Okay, let's have a look at this cap, which should be 16. Eighteen point six, and this inductor here should be about point nine, I think. Yep. So zero point nine two millihenry, one ohm. Okay. Twelve microfarad cap. Fourteen point two, <clears throat> nine point five, and that should be seven. This is a seventy two. Eighty four. <laughs> and then we got a thirty and a sixty. So let's test the sixty. Sixty six point nine and our thirty not looking good. Forty seven. Right, this inductor should be four point five. Yeah. 4.48, that's good enough. Um, the inductors are pretty bulletproof, they're just coils of wire basically. It's difficult for anything to really go wrong with them. Caps can dry out and get heat damaged, all sorts of things. Right, 2.2 .2 and an ohm, so that's good. Just our little one over here. Yep, 0 0.13 and an ohm. Right, okay. <clears throat> so basically, all our issues are crossover related. Um, we may have an issue with that woofer, but I think that's um, we can sort that out. I think even if we have to take the cone out um, and maybe look at the windings, uh, the voice coil and clean them up a bit, but yeah, I'm confident about that. Both our mid-ranges are working, both our tweeters are working. I think it's pretty clear to see where the distortion is coming from, but likely to be all these caps that are out of tolerance. Um, and loose connections, things like that as well. So on this crossover, this 30 microfarad cap is the reason our mid-range isn't working. Um, and on this crossover, the solder joint on that resistor is the reason that's not working. So yeah, new caps throughout, new resistors as well. These, I don't know what the power rating of them is, probably not a great deal. So we'll replace those as well. Um, I will advise Robin that it would be good to rewire these, put some decent cable in and get rid of the push fit connector. But 
you know i understand cost is always a always a thing um we've got one binding post we need to replace on what i'm calling speaker a as well so yeah okay there we go next video we'll um be repairing them okay guys cheers